This video focuses on destructive plate boundaries. In this short video, the following questions will be addressed. What plate movement occurs at a destructive plate boundary? What tectonic processes and tectonic activity happens at a destructive plate boundary? What landforms occur at a destructive plate boundary? And what does a diagram of a destructive plate boundary look like? These are four key areas that you may find come up in your GCSE exam. So the first question we're going to address is what plate movement occurs at a destructive plate boundary? To support this, I have a clear diagram here for you. And we have got the Pacific plate and the Eurasian plate. And you can see their plate movement because the arrows are showing what direction the two plates are moving. So we can see that they are moving towards each other. So sometimes we call this converging. The Pacific plate is oceanic crust, so it's got the ocean on top of it, and the Eurasian plate is continental crust. Where a oceanic and a continental plate meet, the heavier plate, the oceanic, is subducted, it sinks into the mantle beneath our continental plate. So that is the plate movement. Oceanic plate meets the continental plate Oceanic being heavier, subducts and sinks into the mantle. The second question to focus on is what tectonic processes and activity happen at a destructive plate boundary? So taking this idea of tectonic processes, a process is an action and the tectonic process that happens at a destructive plate margin is called subduction. This is where the heavier oceanic plate sinks underneath the continental plate. There is also three tectonic activities that occur at a destructive plate margin. The first one is a volcanic eruption. This is where sticky 800 degrees Celsius magma rises through cracks in the continental crust, erupting violently onto the continental crust, forming a volcano. The second type of tectonic activity is an earthquake. As the oceanic plate subducts beneath the continental plate, friction builds up. When this pressure is overcome, the plates jolt past each other, sending out shock waves in the rock. This is an earthquake. The third tectonic activity is a tsunami. If an earthquake occurs over a strength of 7.5 on the Richter scale underneath the ocean at a destructive plate boundary, then this will cause a tsunami. This is where the power release from the tectonic plates jerking past each other displaces the water above it, sending out a big wave that then travels across the ocean to the coast. The third question relates to the landforms. So what landforms occur at a destructive plate boundary? The first landform is fold mountains. As you can see from the photograph, Fold mountains have a series of folds, hence their name. They are made of sedimentary rock that have been scraped off of the oceanic plate as it subducts underneath the continental plate. And these sedimentary rocks have been pushed up onto the continental plate and they've crumpled and they've folded. The pressure of this, and sometimes the combined heat, can turn this sedimentary rock into metamorphic rock. An example of such fold mountains are the Andes, which are formed from the subduction of the Nazca plate underneath the continental plate of the South American plate. The second type of landform at a destructive boundary is a composite volcano. The diagram here shows you very clearly the characteristics of this volcano. It is very steep. It is conical shape or cone shape. It has steep sides. It is tall. There is a clear crater on the top. And what erupts out of it is ash and lava. And you can see that we've got layers of ash and lava. The magma that erupts is 800 degrees and sometimes it's going to cool in the actual vent where I'm marking on now. 
that causes lots of gas and pressure to build up. And if it can't escape, it's going to form a second vent off the side. So we've got here a secondary cone. Once the pressure is too much and that volcanic uh, material moves up the chamber, up the vent, and it explodes, it is really violent, really powerful. Okay, hence why we've got all this gas and ash. And we call this pyroclastic flow. So pyro, meaning fire, clastic means rocks. And you've got a flow because it comes down the sides like an avalanche. Okay, so pyroclastic flow. The third type of landform that we get at a destructive plate margin are oceanic trenches. These pictures here are simulations. Okay, so this one, uh, the one I've just ticked, that is a simulation of the Marianas Trench, the, one of the deepest parts of the ocean. An oceanic trench is formed where the oceanic plate, the one on the left-hand side here, sinks down beneath the continental plate. The V shape that you can see forming between, so I've marked it in green here, between the two plates as one subducts underneath the other is called the oceanic trench. This image here gives you a different viewpoint of it. Okay, and you can see the arrow pointing to this trench, this line that marks where one plate goes underneath the other. So those are your three types of landforms, fold mountains, composite volcano, oceanic trenches. The last thing to focus on is diagrams of a destructive plate margin. So what you have here are a selection of images from your AQA GCSE textbooks, from past papers, from online sources, all demonstrating the action and the landforms that occur at a destructive plate margin. You can see some similarities between what is labelled. So we have clearly two plates that are moving towards each other. Our arrows just demonstrate this on every diagram. We have also got the mantle labelled on. This is a good thing to include on any diagram as it demonstrates your knowledge of the earth structure. Additionally, between the two plates, as they are one is subducted underneath the other, we do get pressure, we do get friction. So on these three diagrams that I've just circled, you can see that this friction and pressure is identified by a squiggly line or by crosses. Please use either of these in your exam when drawing a diagram. Make sure that you include on the key what the zigzag line means or what the crosses actually mean. The other key thing to do is you must make sure that you clearly enable your plates, so oceanic and continental. It's a good idea as well to try and include examples like this diagram's done here with the Pacific plate and the Eurasian plate. Another thing that has been included on the diagrams is it's very clear that a volcano forms at these plate boundary. Additionally, on this diagram and this diagram, we can see what materials are erupting from the volcano. So we've got this kind of ash cloud to show that we get this um, massive amount of ash and hot lava rocks coming out the top of the volcano because it's so explosive. The other thing to include on any description, any diagram description, is this concept of an oceanic trench. So showing where the two plates are meeting and where one plate goes underneath the other. A good thing labelled on this diagram and this diagram are the fold mountains. So the diagrams here all show a destructive plate margin. They are fully labelled and in an exam you may be asked to draw a diagram of a destructive plate margin to explain how volcanoes form or to explain how earthquakes form. So you do need to know and be able to draw from memory a fully labelled diagram. So use this page to help you with that and practice in your notes drawing out one from memory 
then look at the labels and check that you've got them all completed. That completes this video and hopefully it's given you a good overview of what you need to know about a destructive plate margin.